hello and welcome to Sullivan's Farm. The mood isn't great at the moment, I'll be honest with you. I don't know, is it the weather, uh, which is up and down, we had sunshine and showers and just kind of wet and overcast again today, or price of cattle falling, or unexpected bills in the post, or other bits and pieces going wrong, but I'm not one to, to complain and moan, and I, I keep it to myself as best I can um, most of the time. So we go out, we'll see if we can find a bit of good news around the place to see if we can lift the spirits until the sun comes out again. This is the grass seed that I was rolling in the gorgeous sunshine with my shirt off listening to Shakira last week and already it's starting to green up so I suppose that's that's a bit of good news. It's good news and bad news that grass growth has exploded in the couple of days I was away as well. I was doing a grass walk there yesterday and we won't be stopping this far silage. But I've picked out three other paddocks that I wasn't planning on cutting for silage because they've just gone too strong or they will be too strong by the time the cattle get to them. So between those and, and what I've planned or what I had planned already, we'll have probably an extra 50 bales of silage around here this year that I don't know if we need it, but it'll be in the air. It won't go to waste. If it comes to it, I'll sell it. If not, if, if we need it, we need it. Um, one of the things I thought I'd be showing in this video is the fact um, that I would have had those half dozen smaller Frisian heifer calves picked out and on their own and getting the extra few cubes. But I was only late back on Wednesday night and I've been trying to catch up on every other kind of a little job since then. So I haven't got around to separating out the half dozen yet, but we'll get there. They're doing okay anyway. I'm not concerned about any of them. I guess I just want them to be extra okay. The grass has gone too strong and stemmy here for them. Now it wasn't earlier on in the week when herself left them in here um, when I was away. Now this is the field I said to leave them into. They just came in through the gate over there in the distance. But the plan will be to, to leave the calves out into a field, out in the, the near knock, into a field of aftergrass. The bigger cattle can come up here to clean it out in a couple of days' time. When the day wasn't fit for much else this morning because it was raining so much, I made a start on cleaning out some of the dung. From here, this cable there, don't worry about that, that's from a different job or it's for a different job. Um, but I'll probably get a man with the mini digger in to, to clean out the dung. It's, it's just easier than me trying to sprung it out as, as I did before. And then you end up going over to the physio a couple of times and, and giving him nearly the price of the, the mini digger man for a few hours. There's a few more mini projects. I'll show you what they are. Can you guess what they are yet? Isn't that what they used to say? I'll show you in the next video, maybe, whenever I get around to finishing them. Um, and we have visitors too. From wherever they'd be from. There's cheeks in the nest, so it wasn't in me to knock it, but I'll just need to try and catch it earlier next year. I don't want them pooping in around here. Uh, and flying in and out. They're not much of an addition around the place, but when there's eggs and there's chicks in it, we leave them alone for now. I think I showed you in the last video, I made a start on cleaning the dung out of the new shed. But we have more dung to clean out in a different part of the air. So I'd say whenever that's cleared out, I'll be a bit lazy and I'll get the man who's coming to do that to clean out this bit as well, rather than me messing with it with the, the new bucket that used to be a transport box and then putting the other loader back on, the fork back on to, to get more of it. So we'll get the man who has the right machine for it to do it. I still haven't brought the tractor in for a service that I was on about there in a couple of videos ago. And what hasn't helped, I suppose, or what's taken the urgency off is that I figured out how to fix the, the safety switch that wasn't popping back out underneath the power take off lever. Now it's, it's not bypassing the switch, but it was just a bit of oil and you, you kind of lean in and jiggle it a bit and it pops out the way it should pop out because the PTO is not in gear. I figured that out. So we'll be all right maybe for another week or two without getting it serviced. As long as it's done before the winter, which has gone to one of those kind of jobs now. What I thought I might also be showing are those five two-year-old heifers. Just a little fly there picked out on their own and, and checking them for fat cover and that kind of carry on. Inside in the yard, 
But I looked at them again and I looked at their date of births and they're not 30 months for another while yet. So I'm going to leave them. Go away. I'm going to leave them for another week or a fortnight. And then I'll pick them out and start feeding them. And I guess maybe that's why or that's how I started thinking about the price of cattle at the moment. And the fact that it's going to be dropping from here on, whether we like it or not. But we'll feed them on another bit anyway in another week or a fortnight and we'll go from there. They're doing okay. And as I said, there's loads of grass around. So there's no point in cutting silage for cattle that we won't have. We may as well let them graze it for another while yet. Is that nice bullock? And it's called to that bullock's original farm for a chat. She's a bit small, we'll go past her. <laughs> There's a nicer one. Now we'll go out, we'll have a look at that long grass they were grazing up until last week. We'll see what's happening out there. As we're passing, there's the speckled pear kefir. She's lovely colour and lovely marking and all that, but she's small. As and when I'll be buying more calves, I, I think I'll stick with the whiteheads and the Angus um, and stay away from anything that's looking a bit exotic like that. I'd be wondering at times do fellas try to be hiding the type of cow they have by putting a more exotic bull on her, but we'll see how that goes as well. I'm after buying, or I'm in the advanced stages of buying a Connor Topper, and I'm hoping one of the jobs it'll do around here is to help cut back those ferns that have been creeping out into the field a little bit there, um, and some of the rushes as well. But we'll see, we'll see when it arrives. We'll do wicked damage with that new topper if we get it. We're out in the far off side of the far off knock now. So this is where the, the cattle were grazing that big long stemmy grass, but it's greening up nicely. Now that's partly down to the rain, but we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it anyway. I was just thinking there as I'm walking back in now, another thing that might have put me in bad form was trying to catch up on paperwork the last couple of days there too. It is just a torture and it's never ended. But the one thing I did, I stopped the middle of the paperwork and I, I sent an email there to the, the, the local credit institution uh, to have a chat about borrowing a, few, borrowing a few quid there next year maybe to um, put in a bit of extra st lorry storage and convert a bit of a shade into a milking parlour. By no means a given, I'm still no further down that road than I was the last time I was whinging and moaning about it. But if we can find out what is and what isn't possible on the finances side, that would be some bit of progress. Now the rain is coming again, but in the distance, the new shed, the gate there, that's the first span of the cubicles, second span of the cubicles, and third span of the cubicles. When that board Bia advisor man was here a few weeks ago. We had a great chat about lots of different things and cows was one of them, milking cows. So a quick look at an idea he suggested to me. And he's not the first man, he's the second man to say it to me. Another man I'd look at here at a job probably two years ago now said the same thing. We could put the parlor in here into the third span. This is where the, the calves were, the dung I was showing you just two minutes ago there. And the dairy and the bull tank could go up at the front here. Put a wall kind of from there to there. And then cut out a slot here. So underneath that water pipe there, the cows would walk in down there pit would be where the dung is and then they'd walk up and out here. Out through into the second span which we're in now. Out through that door there and then back out into what they would have come through earlier. Out through the first span here. Just something that I'm kind of bearing in mind at the moment and something else I must get a price for. That's where the cows would walk in then. 
down here and then down to the third span in the distance and they come out through the first span and back off out that way again. I suppose the future is always a good bet when you're looking for something positive. Things will always get better, you tell yourself. Or you'd have to be that kind of an optimist to be firm and anyway, I suppose, in the first place. But there's plenty of positives around in the present too. So we live for those. We, we can't live in the future. We can only live in the present, as Alan Watts or, or one of them lads would say. So thanks a million for watching. Thanks very, very much for listening. And we'll talk to you soon. Good luck.